Another story by Shepard was called Duel in the Snow or Red Rider Nails the Cleveland Kid. Okay. I'll just move on. That's... <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, what? <laughs> Sean, you can't be doing that what? during the intro, man. Well, I don't know. <laughs> well, hello there, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? I do. I know, me too. The excitement of walking down the aisles, browsing the names and the artwork, and finally deciding on the movie you were going to take home with you. Sure, it's hard to beat the ease of the modern era and streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your house. But there was something truly special about making that trip as a child, picking a movie out by hand, and getting a flat tire on your way home. Uh. On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood <laughs> movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte, and joining me as always, local bully Sean Pryor and his toady, <laughs> AJ Vince. How the heck are you? How did I become the toady? Because you are. Sean's the bully. You're the toady. Who? <laughs> Next. <laughs> Arr! Arr! <laughs> <laughs> Just laughs and laughs and laughs. Just cackles. There's nothing to laugh about. <laughs> there, bullying is nothing to laugh about. It's Not really funny. It's really funny, apparently. <laughs> okay, boys, it's time to introduce today's movie. On this episode, we discuss a movie that everyone has seen at some point in their lives on <laughs> Christmas Day. <laughs> There's to. not one person that has not seen at least a clip of this movie. A movie that took us back to simpler times when all we were concerned with was getting that special Christmas gift from Santa. A movie that taught us that you will get your tongue stuck to a pole and you will probably shoot your eye out with a BB gun if you aren't careful. Yep. We are, of course, talking about 1983's A Christmas Story. And for those of you looking to get a refresher on the movie quick, <laughs> turn on TBS. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You're right. right now, dude. Right now. Right now. Uh, but for real, if it's not Christmas yet, uh, HBO Max, as of the recording of this episode in early December 2021, yeah. that shit yep. is right there. HBO Max has become essential, man. It kind of is, right? Yeah. Gotta, it's the essential worker. You got to get that shit. <laughs> it's essential worker. Okay. It is. Okay, so first right. things first, <laughs> let's move along. We like to get the pertinent and important details of the movie from Sean. That's your job. Fucking do it. Here I am, produced by Bob Clark and Rene DuPont. Writ <laughs> written by Bob Clark, Lee Brown, and Jean Shepard. Based off Jean Shepard's novel, <laughs> In God We Trust, All Others Pay Cash. Fuck yeah. Music by Paul Zara and Carl Zitter. <laughs> Edited by Stan Cole. <laughs> Cinematography by Regil Reginald what? Morris. Why was that funny? It's Zitter. It's like Zitz. <laughs> Get it. It was fun. Okay. Uh, directed okay. by Bob Clark. <laughs> Here's the cast. Melinda Dillon, Darren McG McGavin, Scott Schwartz, Jean Shepard. He's the narrator. Uh, Ian Petrella, Teddy Moore, Zach Ward, and Peter Billingsley. The screenplay was based on Jean Shepard's collection of semi-autobiographical -autobi short stories that were published in Playboy magazine between 1964 and 1966. That is oh. an interesting fact. It's kind of weird, right? Kinda like strange. sort of weird, but kind of makes sense. Another story by Shepard was called Duel in the Snow or Red Rider Nails the Cleveland Kid. Okay. I'll just move on. That's <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, what? <laughs> it didn't say anything else about it. it Did they say cross it. the streams in the snow? This was in research for a Christmas story. <laughs> okay. okay, no, no, no. Nope. Uh, please continue. <laughs> Do not ruin anyone's time. <laughs> Bob Clark heard Shepard's story, short story on the radio, entitled "Flick's Tongue." Additional source material was gathered from anecdotes told by Shepard on his co college circuit. Fl what? Flick's Tongue was also a playboy, <laughs> <What>? right? <laughs> You're changing everything I've ever thought <laughs> this about this is, movie currently. This has already ruined everything it's, for it's me. He's very vulgar, I guess. He's just, I don't know, whatever. I, 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 I subscribe <laughs> for the stories. That's it. <laughs> I read the stories. <laughs> Peter Billingsley was the first to be cast in his role as Ralphie. Director Bob Clark almost didn't go with him because he thought he was too famous, but he looked over... He looked over his audition tape and again and knew that he was Ralphie. Apparently, he was in a show back in the day. Yeah, I did read that. I didn't recognize what it was. I didn't recognize the show either. It was like kind I of thought a, it was like a horror movie or like something. It looked like kind of a drama or something. Yeah. yeah I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, he, apparently like he was, it was pretty big. Peter Billingsley plays a nine-year-old when in real life he was 13. Oh, my God. He, Un. 
forgivable. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, Will Wheaton. Uh, Will what? In uh, Stand by Me audition for the role. What? Well. <laughs> what? All right, calm down, everybody. <laughs> We're having a good time. <laughs> yeah. Christmas time. Christmas time. Christmas. <laughs> uh, how about this? Jack Nicholson was considered to play Ralphie's old man and even read and really liked the script, but he was too expensive. I can, I could probably get down with that. I was, when I read that, I'm like, yeah, I think so. To see him like in a like comedic, more comedic role like this, but I kind of interesting. I think we'll I take him too seriously. I know it's a little too scary because Darren McGavin, like he scares me, but yet he's a, we're able to warm up right. at the end. But yeah, like yeah, the shinning know. had just come out. You get two shinning vibes. That's right, shinning yeah. vibes. Uh, the exterior shots were all shot in Cleveland, Ohio, and the interior scenes were in Ontario, Canada. That's a different country. Uh, the film was released a week before Thanksgiving in 1983, a moderate success, earning about two million in its first week. By the time Christmas rolled around, the film was out of circulation. Jesus. Some people demanded the film be brought back, and it was in a limited amount of theaters. So it's I don't know why they would go with that or like take it out of theaters before Christmas. So do you think the, the strict fact of this movie somehow being purchased by TBS and becoming like the Christmas movie, <laughs> yeah. is that the only reason we all know about this? Is this almost like... Uh, like Monster Squad kind of a thing. Like it might be. I mean, it it is like it does stand the test of time. I think it's because it, it's in like a Congress congressional like yeah. uh, chamber of movies. Like yeah. it's just like one of the great American movies. This. Yeah, I feel like that's going to be probably a major point of discussion potentially throughout this episode of of whether or not it like do we love this movie or do we know it because of like it's been yes. sure just uh, it's been ingrained in us from tbs yeah <laughs> for hours on end every Great. christmas i can't wait to get into that i, That's I good love point. it all right it went on to gross 19.2 million but lives on today as the quintessential greatest Single american ball. christmas movie okay there it is <laughs> <laughs> they're little footballs all right so next we <laughs> like, next we like to give the audience a little insight we what we do in this Sports show is mind. we go nostalgia and we strictly talk about nostalgia base, but then we strip that away and we do modern day ratings. So first we got to talk nostalgia. AJ, start us off. What do you think about this movie the first time you saw it? What Hit was your us. rating? I love it. You loved it. That's, it past tense. This is the, actually so. Um, I, although, like I, I watched it a lot, uh, obviously on TBS. This is AJ special, right? But I asked for this movie for Christmas. I actually asked for, like, I got this movie as a gift because I loved this movie so much. Okay. What'd you get? Okay. A VHS, DVD? What were we it talking? Was a, it was a DVD. Okay. Like okay. It was a DVD. The white clamshell case, is that what we're talking? Uh, it no. Had, no, no, it was, uh, it had, it had, um, uh, I think, I think it had Peter Billingsley, like, on the cover, and it was, like, red and, like, foily and, co- okay. like, colorful, so, um, but uh, that's what I remember, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking nostalgia rating here. That's right, so. So, uh, but I, I, I loved this movie as a kid. I always wanted to, I was ecstatic for the 24 hours of Christmas story. I would watch it in and out like every single Christmas. Like I was really excited about this movie. So I, I'll be honest with you. This is probably one of my top Christmas movies of all time. Mm. In order to do that, I think I have to give it then a 9.2. Ah, Sean, what about you, buddy? Yeah, man, kind of similar. I mean, like this movie, it's it's redundant to say pretty much at this point. It's just like it's on TV. Like every Christmas rolls around, you want to watch this movie. Like it, it's on, it plays throughout, and like if you however late you stay up, you yep. just continue watching it. Yep. Um, I thought it was funny back then. I thought it was entertaining. Like what can I say? Uh, I'd have to give it about a seven point five. Seven point five for the Shauner. So me, um, I, I, this is almost the opposite. Of our last <laughs> week movie, right? Where I was like, oh, my God. And you guys were like, eh. And you guys were like, oh, my God. I'm like, eh. Wow. So for me, like, this was never on the top of my Christmas movie watching as a kid. We had other traditions. Okay. Christmas Vacation, Home Alone, that kind of stuff. We would only watch parts of it on TBS on Christmas Day. So I never probably sat down and watched it from start to finish. Yeah. You never knew what part of the movie was what. You right. just would turn it on and be like, oh, here's that part where they do yep. that. Yep. Oh, here it is. And actually, funny enough, my mom, who is definitely listening, she 
can't stand this movie. Oh wow, my mom what? is a saint, and for some reason, I think she's just. I think it's a gag. Like I think she's just pu- pulling our chain. She's like, can't watch this movie. I hate it. What's so, her name? Sue. Yeah, yeah. Sue. This Sue, is AJ talking to you. Right yeah, now. let's let's. And Jeremy, is... can we put the camera on AJ's? Okay, there we go. Let's. <laughs> Sue, this is important. Okay, and I. <laughs> yeah, I, you need to speak into the camera. Sue, Thank you. Sue. <laughs> I, lo- I love you. I I haven't met you, but I love you. And I just. <laughs> it's important that we have a conversation at some point about the importance of this movie in American culture. Okay? Now, I love you, Sue. We'll talk. Now, AJ, you. she will listen to this episode straight yes, through. Sir. Maybe we yes, can sir. change. Maybe we can change her mind. Yes. But yes. that means, like I said, I'm I'm a five on this just because of the indifference of as a child yeah. on this movie. I just thought it was like, eh, whatever, who cares, okay. right? Yeah. So that puts us at an average of 7.23. That You're goddamn would, right. That would, put, <laughs> that would put us at, from the, all the movies we've rated so far, that is just under Jurassic Park and just above Fast and the Furious for nostalgic <laughs> rating. <laughs> for, for nostalgic rating. I love that Fast and the Furious is in the same talking. <laughs> it is. Christmas we're, ta- we're talking it's nostalgia the, rating. It's in the same sky. Hey, man, the most important rating is coming later. The modern day critical <laughs> rating. Okay. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. It's all about family, dude. Hey, everyone. It's AJ from The Confused Breakfast. Before we get to the meat and potatoes of this episode, let's talk about your meat and potatoes, Sean. Me? Luckily, Manscaped has engineered the ultimate groin and body trimmer by focusing on intelligent functionality and an incredibly comfortable grooming experience. I need one of those. That's right. Their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge (laughs) ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. With the new Lawn Mower 4.0, it's never been easier to focus on the details by shining a light on places that honestly just should not be seen other than in the dark. And not to mention all the amazing care products from wipes, ball deodorant, and their uh, everlasting crop reviver. You can make sure your biscuits are properly buttered all holiday season long, guys. Mm. Who who are you? I don't this know. Is, you're awesome at this. <laughs> <laughs> the best news of all is that Manscaped is offering you 20% off and free shipping with the code CONFUSED. CONFUSED? I am confused. Yeah, at manscaped.com. That's right, CONFUSED <laughs> at manscaped.com. And all you have to do is use that code CONFUSED, confused? at checkout. That's going to give you 20% off and free shipping. So unlock your confidence and get your weeds whacked before you get your wiener whacked with the best tools and products from Manscaped. Got to have it. <laughs> All right, so before we get into the full... Never been more true. <laughs> the full scene-by-scene scene film review, AJ hooks us up with the research You're on right. the ratings and critical reviews of this movie when it came out. Let's see what you got, man. Let's do it, Daddy. <laughs> oh, my God. That was an... He's a Foley artist, this man. <laughs> Hey, I just want to point out, you guys, that was not a sound effect. No. I don't know how you did that. <laughs> it will be the only sound effect anybody ever uses for opening a bottle now, though. What? I want that <laughs> now. <laughs> Jesus, dude. Like Wonderful stuff. Tone. Well, hey. Wonderful I, stuff. Let's I, move on. I think, that, I think that brings us right into the, the our favorite place. What is it, guys? The, the tomato, tomato meter. meter. <laughs> That's right, baby. <laughs> They did it again. You got to check out our YouTube because apparently we do a hand movement when that happens. They did it again. (laughs) All right. Uh, This is is certified fresh, by the way, Uh at 89%. So critical rating of 89%. That puts us at the same as Breakfast Club and Karate Kid for critical rating. Good company. Those are are big movies on uh, on this show. There you go. Uh, Audience score is an 88%. That's where they sat, so really close, right, right, in line, right, right in line with them, pretty much. Wow! And moving over to IMDb, it is a seven point nine, and that is, everybody knows that is the audience score we really care about. The seven point nine. Right. If that, if we want to rank that again against the movies we have done, that is number four on the list of all movies we have done. Just understand by me, just above Ghostbusters. Wow! Hmm. For 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 fan rating on IMDb. Really? There's only been three movies that got Nate in it, so I'm just Jeez. saying <laughs> this is right under those. IMDb is tough to crack. Yes, um, it is. I just have one critical review for you. This is from the AV Club. They gave it a hundred out of a hundred. Got to. All right, and this is just a little excerpt from there. Uh, 
The affection audiences feel for A Christmas Story is related to the holiday spirit, yes, but specifically to Clark and Shepard's awareness of how the true meaning of Christmas manifests in the real world. Nice. Okay. I like that because it is. It's it's very much as a kid, like your perception is so tunnel vision as a kid when you're in Christmas, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's that's my favorite thing. On the audience reviews and everything, uh, I've just got a couple of, of one stars to maybe suit with Mike and Sue. Please. Uh, Mike and uh, Mike and Sue. Oh, uh, I mean, Sue. Thank you. OK, yeah, Sue. <laughs> uh, we'll he talk. Leans, he leans back. <laughs> we'll talk. <laughs> uh this is this is a nice and short one. This is a one one out of ten. Uh Dark Dementris on April second of twenty twenty one. Oh yeah. What's your number, girl? <laughs> Read this in Playboys. Fuck. Not the same. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is it's nice and short, sweet. So boring I couldn't keep awake during it. Maybe this is a boomer movie. I don't know. Not my thing. <laughs> Okay, that's it. I kind of like that review. <laughs> that's Anytime that's someone it. uses boomer, I'm this in. is boomer oh, thing. Man. I don't know. It's not my thing. I don't know. Not my thing. <laughs> hey, they're honest. Like, I don't know. I like to think that that's some trucker guy who also uses like the same um, like like uh, AOL instant messenger handle for his IMDb and like that's what happens. Work <laughs> email. Yeah, but it's just it's a dark dementia. So Lonely he can have Stoner fun. four twenty sixty nine. <laughs> no, that is that is a trucker who who creates a dark dementia. A screen name like that to try and lure things. Other dark dementresses. Dark (laughs) dementresses. That's what that is. Big eggs. One out of ten stars. This is the last one I'm going to give you guys. Nice, short, and sweet this time around, okay? If you couldn't see this coming, this is the worst film I've ever seen, says Baseball Girl 94 (laughs) 8671, June 30th of 2011. (laughs) What's going on in the world? Why, is, why are their screen names add so much legitimacy? They really do. It's very <laughs> important. Let me add some more dimension to this. I'm 13, <laughs> and in my entire life, I've never seen a m- movie worse than this. <sighs> Lots of exclamation points. This was a terrible movie that practically has no meaning and is terrible. Every year, my family makes me watch this, and every year, I hate it more. This movie just gets stupider as I get older, and I will never make my children watch this. Maybe you get stupider. As you get oh! <laughs> Got him! Again, never going to make your children watch this unless they deserve it. Like if they murdered someone. That's how bad it is. Oh, shut up. My advice? Never watch this. If you have any common sense, you will never lay your eyes on this terrible film. Everyone says it's a classic. It's not. Die before you watch this. <laughs> Wait, but this movie's on the ones that you, you have to see before you die. It's on the Criterion Collection. <laughs> if you think you're one of those people who'd like it, be my guest and watch it. Be warned. It's bad. But you watch it, you're just plain stupid. If you want a better <laughs> movie, watch Rudolph. It's one million th- times better <laughs> stars better than I don't... And I don't even really like that. Good luck, but listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let okay, so 2011, so that is that is a le- that is 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh so this person ago. is 23 23 Are years old. Are they in college? What are they doing with their life? I don't know. Yeah, I, baseball. Oh, they write for the Sun Times. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe so. she got a scholarship for baseball? Oh, I don't know. Um <laughs> God, I hope so. Big yikes. Well, I'm just going to, we're going to end that on big yikes. We're going to end that on a big yikes. <laughs> That's a big old thank, prescription thank, strength yikes AJ, right there. Thank, you, thank you for your service. <laughs> I appreciate well, this. This is what I have to deal with, guys. <laughs> yeah. This is what I have to deal That's with. That's tough, man. Well, my dudes, what do you say we travel back in time to the days where men and women slept in separate twin beds? You had to fight your furnace on a daily basis during the winter, and all bullies had to do was raise their arms in the air, make a dinosaur noise, and you would crap yourself in terror. Let's not go. Here we go. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so Ralphie Parker, a few friends, and his younger brother Randy look into the display window of a local store. Ralphie has his eyes set on the only items he wants for Christmas, an official Red Ryder carbon action 200-shot range model air rifle with a compass in the stock and this thing that tells time. Ralphie tries to sneak advertisements and hints into conversation with his parents, but is shot down. 
He daydreams about him saving the family from criminals using his BB gun. Meanwhile, his grouchy father is forced to battle the temperamental house furnace in the basement. This movie looks like it was shot in the 1950s or 1940s. Like, there's a, there's actually a debate, huge you, debate, right? Do you know when? Like they never really say when this happens. There's right? a couple talking points, right? Do you have those? I, I do. So so the debate exists about when the film takes place. The Wizard of Oz was 1939, which we know it has to happen after that because they're, they're in the parade. Because they're in the parade. Uh, but the decoder ring points to 1940. The calendar on the wall during the first dinner sequence has December 1st on a Friday, which happened in 1939. However. Bing Crosby's version of Santa Claus is Coming to Town was released in 1943. So, so it yeah. could be anywhere from 39 to 43 is what they're saying. It's never said in the film, which is I kind of I like that about it. it I keeps, do too. It's, it's really mysterious. And like, it doesn't put the date on it there. It keeps this movie extremely timeless. Yeah. And, and that's what this movie is good for. Uh, yeah, it's... It it just looks like it, man. Like I I believe every second of it. It, it like it. If I wasn't none the wiser, and this movie didn't come out, it was like eighty three. Was this uh, movie eighty three? Yeah, eighty three. Um, if I would I would just be like, yeah, this movie is from the nineteen thirties, forties. Yeah, I think I even yeah. thought that as a child. That, yeah, that that they colorized like a black and white movie. Yeah, because even yeah. the color yeah, yeah. seems kind of weird sometimes and out of place. Like they just added color. There's like a little like kind of hue on the lens yep. a little bit that makes it like a little like uh, soft. Yeah, like, yeah. A, like a soft look to it. It's like so the it's, sepia tone vibe yeah. that just that it is. It just feels that way, especially while they're like looking in on all the presents and yeah. stuff, all the gifts at Higby's. Uh, uh, is what what the store is called and like they're all just looking in and awe and i just think about i like to think back to be like man they just thought all that stuff was so awesome and cool and interesting <laughs> and then i'm looking at it and i'm like what the fuck is all that stuff <laughs> because like i was like where's the where's, where's the video games and where's where's the where's the cool where's guns? the drone and, yeah where's the drone <laughs> Where's the GoPros? Yeah. Where's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, dude? Yeah, where's the G.I. Joe's and action figures? Like literally, the coolest thing is what Ralphie wants. Is that yeah, right it really the is. Uh, but for me, it was the trains. The trains? Uh, I, I, Are you I, a train guy? Oh, I'm a train guy. Oh, wow. Choo-choo. That's unfortunate. Yeah, train guy. Okay. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Are, do you... Have we never talked about this? I like trains. The coolest thing in that in that thing was the <laughs> Red Rider BB gun. All right, we'll just cut and, this. We'll uh, cut my part out. Please. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, cool. yeah. <laughs> We're not going to cut that. <laughs> but that, that, the, the nose is stuck to the window. Yeah. I mean, that is, that is such nostalgia. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a truthful thing of, of, of just kids of, of that era. They don't, have vid- they don't have phones. They don't have iPads. Like, that is their iPad, is right. looking into this store and being yeah. like, oh, it's like information overload for them. Right. Yeah. Where where nowadays, like, I'm not looking in that window. I got this game going on my iPad. You know, yeah. it's it's a really cool take take you back to the old days of the simpler times. And and speaking of that, that narrator's voice is John Shepard, yeah. uh, who is the writer of mm-hmm. the story. Jean Chappelle. Jean Chappelle. Yeah. Here, here, his here his Jean voice, Pierre. his voice is I argue is perfect for this movie. Mm-hmm. The, it, it's so warm. It's so happy. It, it's like it, a, it's very unique. Yeah. And his writing. I mean, if you break this down into just words, his writing's beautiful. It's real, really it, oh, the, yeah, the it's way phenomenal. he describes shit is perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. It's. Yeah. It seems. It also seems like to me, and I think I thought this as a kid. Like, oh, that's that's that is actually that Ralphie grown up. That's his voice. That's his actual. Like, that's what voice. I thought, and it's like it does seem that way. Like it, I got it. Just it's just so seamless to me. It's, yeah. it's perfect. Do you know? Uh, did you guys ever have a Red Rider BB gun? I have one currently. Okay, so then do you? Did you have the same model as this movie though? I don't think so because I don't think they made them with like the compass in the stock. The com- and and so Lucky that's what I was getting to. The, 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 the thing that tells time. Do you know what that is? I had to look it up. All these years, you hear him say. Compass in the stock and the thing that tells time. Mm. Do you know what that is? Mm-mm. No. It was a sundial. <laughs> it had like it was ingrained into the wood of the stock where you would put oh my a little thing on there and you would lay it flat and it would tell you what time of day. Oh it my is. gosh! <laughs> this thing that I don't think that's the official uh, verbiage. Thing that tells he time. says, "Yeah, I don't know what a, <laughs> what a sundial is, so it's the thing that tells time." <laughs> There's a, a buddy of mine, Corey. Uh, we always have a joke, like because we've hunted together and stuff like that, and like every time we'll pull out the pull out a gun or something and we're like oh yeah that's a nice gun it's like luckily it's got a compass in the stock (laughs) (laughs) all the time he also repeats to me every single time 
comes up like if if somebody sits down, he's like, I'd like to fumigate this here chair from our last week's <laughs> our episode. Last episode. <laughs> he's like, How much you said how, how much you set you back? back. <laughs> <laughs> he always throws that at me. So I couldn't think of these like movies that we just did without thinking about Corey. So totally man. <laughs> I like how Ralphie's doing some like intrusive marketing before even Zuckerberg was even a yeah, thing. Man. Like he's putting the red or the red rider BB gun ad into her magazine. Genius. But he puts it on his dad's bed. <gasps> oh, his dad's bed. So, not to get there already. But oh, like, wait. Re- oh. He tells everybody that he wants a Red Rider BB gun except his dad. That's right. Shit. But he actually does. Oh. So, he sort of does tell his... His dad's smart. He knows what's going on. Here. Yeah. So, I'm thinking, like, maybe there is a little theory out there. It's like, maybe he saw that little ad and he's he, he had one when he was a little boy, too. And he's <sighs> like... Oh, okay. Well, I'll get him. I'll get him that. Yeah. The only person he didn't ask. He planted it, but he didn't plant it the right way. Yeah. Potentially, I see. Yeah. But you can see why he didn't ask him. Exactly. Uh, yes. Yeah. He's yeah. a mean man. <laughs> uh, yeah. After he goes down, after he plants that, he goes downstairs, and that's when he's thinking, just like a kid, like, oh, it's gonna be easy. I'm just gonna mention, uh, flick saw some grizzly bears down near <laughs> Alaska's candy store. I love the entire family face when they look at him. They all just go. <laughs> Excuse me, what did you say? <laughs> even even fucking little Randy's like, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's so genius how 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 it plays on how a kid's mind works. Like you just yeah. think throughout this whole movie, there's moments where you're like, you're an idiot. This yeah. is not gonna work, but you think it's gonna work as a kid. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. all his dream dream sequences and like like this one especially where he's dressed he's dressed as like he looks like he's about to go overseas to Vietnam and entertain our boys. To be honest, uh, if you've ever seen Apocalypse Now, but um, like it's 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 got that like soft tone yeah. like that it it intensifies as it as it goes there. But like all his dream sequences, like like just dreaming about the Red Rider or, you know, things that are like his teachers or something like that is so good. And this is like one of the only scenes that was like front to back shot in all different locations. Oh really? <laughs> so like well while they're filming him inside it's uh Ontario. And oh. I think while they're filming him outside, it's Cleveland or, or vice Weird. versa. It's, so when it cuts back, it's like they, those are like different countries apart cuts. That's I like funny. insane. I like how different those dream sequences are because not only does it look different when it, throughout the whole movie, but he's also the overacting of everyone oh, yeah, in yeah, those yeah. dream sequences. Yes. Like the the mom and the dad are like, "Oh boy, what are you gonna do?" Oh, like, yeah. they, well, they, we think it's Black Bart oh, again, Black there, Bart, yeah. Ralph. <laughs> Good thing I got old blue. Good thing I got old blue. I, Luck I got compass in stock. <laughs> I, I just think it's great how they how they because the kid is clearly the one dreaming this, so yeah, people aren't gonna act the way they should normally yeah, in real yeah. life because he thinks this is what would happen. Yeah, it's, it's an over exaggeration. Completely, yeah. it's you're right. The the dream sequences gives like what might be it like especially the teacher w- yes. later on like yes. what might be a kind of a mundane kind of drab yeah. character to like get amplified like they're on a theater stage or something like that it's it and th- and all the actors actually performing that yeah. shows some of their talent like oh yeah like, yeah like darren mcgavin just overreacting <laughs> and it's, it's so good uh his swearing tirade <laughs> is they get better and better like but i just i on this one i i, I at least heard like dad gummit dolly wop do better <laughs> <laughs> did you put captions on it? Oh yeah, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, did, yeah. did it caption out all of his words? It did. I should have done that. Damn it, it. Did. it was pretty. Father great. wove a tapestry of obscenities that to this day <laughs> still hangs over Lake Michigan. That that is what I'm talking about with his words. It's beautiful, yeah. isn't it? It's a beautiful it's sentence. So it's so eloquent. It's so good, man. And it is so funny. And, and in this it, context, it's hilarious. Oh yeah, my almost gosh. like actually picture a cloud of words like hanging over Lake Michigan yeah. when he says that. It's yeah, incredible. I know. I, I, you, your mind goes there. Yeah. Just like the same way that like his his uh, fantasy sequences go there. Yeah. Somehow it pull like the 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 words pull you to yep. th- the same idea in your head. It's it's mm-hmm. great, man. They they did ask Aaron, Darren McGavin about how he ad libbed those rants. Uh, he said he speaks gibberish the entire time because it was almost impossible for him to ad lib angry words without actual profanity. <laughs> sure. Uh, so so like he did this in order to ensure the PG rating, which is very Home Alone esque. Joe Pesci. Very true. Same yeah. thing. Yeah. Just fracking, 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 fracking. Yeah. Just fridge and frack. Fridge and fracking. <laughs> as long as those hard Fs are in there. You know That's right. I mean? <laughs> I mean, maybe, I mean, one of the most iconic lines to me anyway is I can't put my arms down. But it's just so funny looking at him, like just all bundled up and like, like literally like looking like a 
like a stigmata like <laughs> kind of a thing tick that's about so, to pop. Yeah. This was a this was a Mandela effect thing for me actually because whenever this scene came around, it would always be the joke was I got to go to the bathroom, but it's I got to put my arm I can't put my arms down. Oh. And so everyone around us would always say like, "Oh, I got to go to the bathroom" as the line. So yeah, it was this like, weird oh. Mandela effect. The, like you guys know what I'm talking about with that, yeah. Like, and it's just like you you remember something completely different, yeah. and then you go back and you watch it now, and it, and it's nope, I can't put can't my arms down, <laughs> and it it blew my mind like every time up until about I don't know six years ago. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean in that case, like it would take him about ten minutes to go pee. Oh yeah, absolutely. get all that shit off. It makes sense. Extended <laughs> deep sea diving. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, let's get into that scene then, actually. So Ralphie, Randy, and their two friends, Flick and Schwartz, walk to school. Schwartz dares Flick to stick his tongue to the pole, and it does stick. After a rescue from the fire department, the teacher assigns the students to write a theme about what they want for Christmas. On the way home, the boys are confronted by a local bully named Scut. Not Scott. Scut. I know, right? Marcus, mind-blowing. And his toady, Grover Dill. Ralphie makes it home and finishes his theme just as his father comes home, shouting excitedly that he won a grand prize in a local magazine sweepskates. 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 <laughs> During dinner that night, Randy displays his typical descent for food. Then the doorbell rings with the grand prize delivery. Turns out to be a giant leg lamp, and the old man loves it, proudly setting it up in the window. It wow. is here. The rules of being a kid are so important in this movie. Yeah. About like the interaction where they're double daring and triple dog daring. That if you think back to childhood, yeah. there there are these like codes and rules, and this is how we do things, and yeah. this is how we do it. And I love how that movie plays on that. This is what's important to us in our so political <laughs> like world as kids. You know what I mean? It's so it's it's like oh man, you can't back down now. You know you you screwed up, bro. When when in actuality, like yes, it's can. it's so obvious. It's like well, there's only one place this is going to go. It's going to go from double dog to to king do- to triple, triple dog, dog to, to triple king dog, yeah. king triple dog, and you're just like it's like it's only the one place it can go that you keep denying it. It's just like <laughs> it's like oh okay, I guess we have to go there. And he's and. He even says at one point, it's like, well, he kind of played a folly on the rules. Yep. It, it like could mark him for a folly on the rules, but by skipping, <laughs> but he went right to King <laughs> Triple Dog there. Yeah. And he just did it. And it's so just like, funny. Wow. I love and when his when he sticks his tongue on the pole. He's like, this yeah. is nothing. This is nothing. You guys know how they did that? So no, so you explain, but I thought I thought without a doubt that was real. They let him right. they had like a pail of hot water and they were ready. Oh. But no, that's not what it was, was so it? So they just cut like a little small hole in that pole and they had like a little suction oh device God. just just enough to keep his tongue there. Wow. That they could stop the suction in his tongue. Would Again, just come back man, out. this movie seems like it seems like that's what if this movie was made back then, that's yes. what they would do. Yes. But in the eighties, it's like, yeah, well, no, we'll do it safely, yeah. <laughs> you know, borderline safely. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, true. We'll, we'll yeah, see he's, what happens. He's, he's still he's still tonguing a dirty pole, <laughs> <He's> <laughs> <So. still laughs> which was I think a line in the, in the in the Playboy before he was a oh, bad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, callback. What is this, Hustler Forum? What's Dude, going on? <laughs> and I love how, like, again, playing on the kids. As a kid, Ralphie truly thought that he could get away with, like, not admitting that he did it. <laughs> yeah. In fact, all the kids get up and run to the I window, and they yeah. still stay sitting down. <laughs> yeah. The teacher sees that. And she knows she knows damn well that they did it, and but they think they're like I love how Ralphie turns <laughs> around and <Yeah. laughs> I feel like we've all done that, right? Oh, somebody, it's, uh, you should feel very ashamed of yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, you should, you should, whoever you are. He looks like he just whoever got caught, you are like, burying his shit or something like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like a cat in the litter box, like oh shit, oh man, oh no, shit, <laughs> don't like, take my poop, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> treasure, oh. <laughs> Why fucking, are we talking about catch it? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I got all excited. <laughs> fucking scut. 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 S-C-U-T. I thought it was Scott it's my same. entire life. The same here, man. It's crazy. I, like, it's like watching the subtitles and just like, yeah, I need this because it would like I, I would have thought Scott Fargus the entire time. Scut. Yeah. Scut. Scut. So like again, we touched on it in the intro, but bullying apparently was different back in the day because literally all you had to do was just go roar. What? I the uncle thing? Like, like you're supposed to just oh, you're supposed to give up and give your yeah. arm for Uncle. I that was teetering still in my because I'm a little bit older than you guys. Oh, take a drink. Take a drink. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. 
I do remember that being a young child that like noogies and uncle like was oh, apparently yeah. something that came from that era and still made its way up. It's like, I, yeah, instead, yeah, I'm like, never mind. I'm not even going to go there of <laughs> mo- modern day bullying versus that and what terrible lengths it's come to nowadays. But like, it's just weird. It's just different. Yeah. Like just ah, and then your toady, who's by the way is like three foot tall, girl. <laughs> yeah, what Dillis. the hell? What the hell? I, I will stand by this to the day I die. Like you put a, a small kid into weird like adult clothes, and it's yeah. comical to me because <laughs> this three <laughs> three year old <laughs> kid looks like a cabbie from New York. Yeah, yeah. Fuck it does. <laughs> yeah, he looks like he's in this in the show taxi. <laughs> he hey, come over here. He's got a stogie and shit. <laughs> he looks like fucking Danny DeVito or some shit. Like yeah, he's just like, come here. Come in. Hey, no, kid. Come in. <laughs> Rawr! Rawr! Oh, you're cute. They put on a fucking Kengel hat on him. And he's just like, he's uh, he's like <laughs> automatically 10 years older in oh, my mind. He thought he was going Sam Jackson. <laughs> he just went way funnier. Uh, what the fuck is so funny while, while, while bullying? Like, why are they? Scott Fargus is just like, ha, 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 what in the gods? Yellow name? eyes. Have you guys ever been a bully? I, I imagine no, not. Not. It's just like it's. I imagine it's not that entertaining. I've never been a bully. I know that. I know that I've been on like the the opposite. I've been bullied, but I've also been like the guy who is like the toady. Probably like a I toady. Said in our intro. Probably a toady at some point. You know. <laughs> God, how'd you know, Mike? Damn. And where are they? Are do they go to school? Or are they just waiting for these kids as, as they come? No, because they've never set foot in school. So yeah. I don't. Okay. So they just wait for them, like psychopaths. Yeah, yeah. They just they just wait around. They they have nothing better to do. They don't even rob them when they and like they, the only thing Come they, on, they, they don't even rob them. <laughs> they don't even take their lunch money. What the fuck? No, Jesus. <laughs> well, it's after school, I guess. <laughs> it's like, hey, give us your lunch it. money. We already spent it at school, asshole. We gotta get them during <laughs> recess, man. That's what we gotta do. <laughs> they're something. clearly not very smart. They're figuring it out. <laughs> yeah, they're working on it. I like when they're punching each other. They're just like kind of checking each other. Like, yeah, that was fun, right? <laughs> and then it's like, ow, ow, that hurt. Ow. Okay, ow. And then it's like, ow, it's ow. It's like, <laughs> it's, like, it's like the Charlie horse thing on the arm. I don't know. That was really funny to me <laughs> for some reason. And then you get to the like probably the most famous scene of this movie is the leg lamp, right? I mean, yeah. would you call that? That's the iconic moment of this movie where if you were asking for props, you probably want the original leg lamp. Yeah. I'm not saying that I do. Uh, but, yeah, that the, the fragile, like... Fragile. That, and how excited the old man is about this. <laughs> he just... He's probably never won anything in his entire life, so that's oh. why he keeps playing on this. He's like, I don't give a fuck what this is. I want it, and I've never won anything in my entire life. That kind of thing is just a desperate family man who works his ass off like writhing for something different in his life and will make a major award a huge deal. Yeah. You know, it's just like, it's that kind of feeling where it's, it's the mundanity yes. of everything. Even though he loves his family, it's just like the one, whatever it is, I don't care what it's it is. It's more important at this moment. Because <laughs> yeah. clearly wife, wife does not like it and feels threatened by it, but he's like, don't care. This is my moment. Yeah. Was this was this what he won from like the crossword puzzles? I, that's what I get. Uh, is that what I'm gathering? I don't think they really touch on it, but yeah, he won it from like a local magazine. The yeah. Lone Sweepstakes. Ranger's cousin's horse yeah. name or something. Cousin's name. <laughs> Technically, she was right. Is, is what I looked up. <laughs> is that right? Yeah, whatever name she said. <laughs> yeah. Victor. Yeah. And, and again, it, it plays on like the gender stereotypes of the era. He's like, how do you know that? Yeah. yeah. Like, Every, like, you're not supposed to know anything. Everybody you knows dumb that. Lady. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's just a little like of the time. I guess guess of that era yeah <laughs> you know yeah, um, absolutely so when he gets out so he's like you gotta see it from out here, <laughs> yes, <they're> out here. <laughs> I love that. the guy standing next to him his neighbor is bob clark the yeah. director oh, did, God, did that's you right did you also notice again critical watching i did not know that was the director but i did notice what he was wearing he had a Miami Dolphins stocking hat on. Yeah. Oh. Uh, the Miami Dolphins uh, <laughs> became a team in 1966. Okay. <laughs> oh, my so, God. It's so a little bit of an little oversight there. That's, that's okay. <laughs> it's, it's good. Everything's fine. I, I'm wearing my director's cap while I act. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. You know I wear Miami <laughs> Dolphins stuff in my movies. It's, a, it's another one of these lines that Ralphie, uh, adult Ralphie, says, and he says, he says, there's only one a few things that could draw me away from the soft glow of electric sex. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> oh, God, it's, that's fucking it's brilliant. perfect. It's so good. The and words. He's, like, he's just like, well, it's a, it, 
It's a leg. He's like, it sure is. He, just he, like, he goes he right for the leg. butt part yeah, of that like, leg. <laughs> he does, man. <laughs> Ralphie. <laughs> God damn it. He doesn't know why he likes this leg, he, but he, something deep primal inside that's of him right. makes you like this He's leg. Like, that's part of the leg <laughs> I like. Hey, I mean, if he, if he puts little subtle suggestions in, in magazines of, the, of his parents, yeah. I'm sure he's, been, he's seen some stuff in one of those magazines. You yep, know? there you go. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> Oh, I agree with you, man. His his words are so perfect. It's they're they're great, man. Soft glow, electric sex, sex, <laughs> and and even before that, he says a uh, uh, a quick whiff of ozone. <laughs> yeah. You know when when, he, when the the fuses blow yeah, out, they blow. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's counting all the plugs. That's yeah. basically what we did tonight when we were trying to <laughs> yeah. film our YouTube. We're like, how many plugs can we plug <laughs> in this wall? Hey everybody, it is Mike from the Confused Breakfast Podcast, and I really wanted to give a shout out. To our sponsor, our favorite whiskey in the entire world, the coming from Cedar Ridge Distillery. Mm. They are located in our backyard in Swisher, Iowa. Cedar Ridge is one of the fastest growing whiskey companies in America. They were named Distillery of the Year in 2017. God, it's so fucking... I just like looking mm. at the bottle. So good. We are huge fans of all their delicious products, including the quintessential American single malt, their whiskey collaboration with Slipknot. Fuck yeah, people equal shit, dude. Which is actually a bourbon and a rye mixed together. Who does that? What? Slipknot. That's what I'm saying. They're crazy. And of course, uh, the flagship bourbon, which is my go-to. Just look at this little neat glass right here. Ooh. That's what I'm sipping on right now. In fact, yeah. let me take a sip. Some mm. skis. Get it, Mike. Good God. <sighs> Oh, yeah. Yes. If you're in Iowa or around the Midwest, you can likely find some at your favorite local establishments. If you want to give it a shot but are elsewhere in the country, you can order online at cedarridgewhiskey.com. Trust us. We have not steered you wrong with anything we have done. Ever. 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 If you or someone special in your life loves whiskey, order some now. You will not be disappointed. Enjoy responsibly. I have a driver who takes me home after these episodes, so that's the best part. There you yeah. go. CedarRidgeWhiskey.com. 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 Next day at school, Ralphie hands in his theme at school. Upon arriving home, he is disappointed with his little orphan Annie Dakota ring. Later that night, as the old man rushes down to do battle with the furnace, Mrs. Parker breaks the leg lamp, much to the old man's dismay. At school, Ralphie brings his teacher a gift, hoping it will persuade... <laughs> I got through that right. <laughs> persuade her to give him a good grade. That evening, the family goes out to pick out a Christmas tree. On the way home, the car blows a tire, and Mr. Parker goes outside to fix it. Ralph goes to help, but utters the dreaded F word and is punished at home. <laughs> um, so I never noticed this, ever. And, and that's why I love doing this. This I know it takes a lot for us to rewatch these movies and be critical, not just sit back and enjoy, but I love when I find things that I never noticed before. Ralphie's having the daydream of turning in his theme. Yeah. And he's standing there like a doofus in front of the class <laughs> going, eh. but uh, the, they do the daydream and the teacher's like reads his, his theme and it's an A plus, you know, like, a plus, and plus. she goes, she goes on the chalkboard. And she writes a plus plus and she starts going plus, down the chalkboard. Plus. It cuts back to his classmates coming up to lift him on their shoulders. Yeah, yeah. But the teacher keeps going. She turns the corner on oh, yeah, the yeah. wall, yeah. and she starts <laughs> adding pluses on the wall. I've never noticed that yeah, before. That's oh. so good. Just <laughs> never know. I mean, she, she again, the, the actors in these daydream sequences just go. I imagine the director's like, go yeah, over the over top. Over the top. Just, just be completely crazy. I also heard the teacher was like eight months pregnant at the That's time. Right. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. they like had to give her all these big like dresses. Cause, <laughs> oh, cause wow. in the era that wouldn't have been like something that would have happened. I guess. Yeah. Okay. yeah you know, she would have been like a teacher. You can't be pregnant. Oh well, yeah. Or, or yeah, they don't, <laughs> Yeah, I get you. Been there, you know what I mean? Birthing that baby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you be doing no work. Work. <laughs> um, I think before this too, when uh, when when he visualizes uh, again, and it's like with his mother, too, right? She's the wicked. She, she shows up uh, with the "You'll shoot your eye out." Yeah. Thing, right? So the the whole oh, line the, "You'll oh, shoot God. your eye out" was written like once in in the entire script. And Bob Clark liked it so much that he just went way overboard with it. Yeah. Like especially in this scene, this scene where they're just like, "You'll shoot your eye out." You'll shoot your eye. I mean. One of the most famous lines was almost just like one time. One and That's done. It. I think I read it was like it was said thirty times in the 30 movie. Thirty times, <laughs> and it was just once in the move in the book. Well, just since we're on the subject, when they're when they're cackling at him and and like his teacher is all dressed up as a witch, 
and his mom is there as the like jester girl. Yep. <laughs> Too spooky. <laughs> Too <laughs> spooky, guys. A couple Batman villains. Fucking hated this. I hated this so much. This was one of those moments where I was like, oh, yeah, I, I have to go in the other room for like eight minutes, and then I have to come back, and hopefully the commercials are done. And that's what I wanted. I I could not watch this scene. It it, it creeped me out. It's too spooky. <laughs> it's understandable, man. It's too, too spooky. spooky. Guys. I get it. Uh, uh, so the the one cool thing again of watch of going back is the oval teen scene Ovaltine? and realizing yeah like re- Ovaltine? <laughs> Ovaltine? <laughs> <laughs> but realizing <laughs> like watching a kid learn like his first life sucks. <laughs> And his life is disappointing. It's like awesome to me. I'm like, oh, kid, it's going to get worse from here, bro. It's not all fun anymore. Fuck You're getting you old know. now. You don't even know. <laughs> and like he learned, we watched this kid learn that like, oh, shit. And he has the same reaction as we do. Like when we drop our keys outside of our apartment or something like that, it's like, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> or like you didn't get your <laughs> bonus or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and then you just, a bitch. you just move on. You'd be like, God damn it. I wasted <laughs> just, a lot of effort on He that. just left it all there too. Like right there. <laughs> he's just like he's holding up his brother in the bathroom, which wow, that's a real faux pas. Like that's a brotherly like diss right there. <laughs> just holding up your brother from taking a crap. But that that's upsetting, man. Speaking uh, of speaking of that toilet, that it cuts like right as uh, his brother, what's his brother's name? Sorry, Randy. 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 It cuts right as Randy is opening the lid to the toilet to his mom's cooking, like just like the the bowl to bowl <laughs> cut. And it's just kind of like a subtle, like uh, her her, her cooking shit. Stewed cabbage, whatever it they was. They have it every meatloaf. night. Beet loaf. Right? Be- it's every single night. They isn't have it, it every night. It's just like meatloaf and cabbage and like potatoes. I think. It's oh, like, low God. beet. <laughs> and during that scene too, when he's when he's like playing with his food and like laughing and like like who's my little piggy? His mom was on set doing like like making fart noises and shit to oh, make really? him laugh. Yeah, to make him she laugh. was like right 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 oh off a of camera. God, that's pretty like that. awesome. Um, I know I know we already it, we already kind of talked about, it, but I had to I had to make mention of this. Like Mike, you're an English you were an English major or something, right? Yes, yes, <laughs> or yes. something. So. Something, something <laughs> along that that's not important. I know it's hard. To, <laughs> I know it's hard to figure out in these episodes, but yes, I was. <laughs> but but Mike Mike uh, Mikey, I was trying to talk about you again. Uh, no, Ralphie Ralphie writes a theme, yeah. right? And I love I love it's like I want you all to write a theme. A theme. A theme. A theme. And then, oh! Ah! <laughs> By the way. Ralphie's theme sucks ass. It's not good. <laughs> it's really he actually bad. misspells Christmas on it. If you look at it, it says C H I S T M A S. He doesn't even have an R in there when he returns it. It's, I do. I do like though when he when after he like he's reading it to himself or whatever, and he explains like the yeah. his whole yeah, car- carbon like, action and then semi semiotic rifle is wow. Like, who would want that? Wow, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I do not think a football is a good gift. And yeah. neither do I. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> that. Who wants a football for Christmas? And, like he's got some good points. I'm just saying he writes it as as though you're writing a paper that you don't want to write, but there's like a certain amount of like sentences you have to have. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like it's like it's like I want a, a red rider BB gun. It football is, is really not good. I think it is a really great gift. I do not think football is good. <laughs> <laughs> that is how it used to be, though. God you got damn. It, man. it sounds like he's reviewing <laughs> a Christmas story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all it is. <laughs> when they go, uh, again, it shows off the 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 subtleties of the old man's life, of how the, the little things are what really drive him. Like, oh, he's yeah. fallen into mundane life, The the uh, going to the Christmas tree lot. Yeah. And haggling with the guy was yeah. like the most excitement, oh, he the loves best that. moment of his life. <laughs> Haggle with the best of them, and then he gets the flat tire. And he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna! I thought it was an indie car. <laughs> it's like these the guy, experiences. That's all he lives for." But I love, I love Darren McGavin as an actor. I mean, he was Billy Madison's father. That's right, right. That's right. Yeah. I was gonna link the two, but I didn't go there. Well, you could. <laughs> no, no, no. It's good. But I love one of my favorite acting parts of him in the movie is. His face change when Ralphie says fudge. Yes. He goes, he goes to like, oh no, the nuts are in the air to what did you say? <laughs> I like that slow motion change of his facial features oh, is God, one of my so favorite parts good, of the movie. Dude. It's Even so if he good. did say fuck, and I know they slowed it down, but saying it that slow would still be awkward. I'm sure his father <laughs> I'm sure his father was just like, What the fuck did you just say? <laughs> yeah. So wait, you're saying in real time he went, Oh, Fuck. Yeah, I'm so, like they slowed it way down. 
Like, it just seems like they like. What are you it's, even saying? Are you talking in slow mo? <laughs> I have to say though, this is the quintessential holding the flashlight for your dad while he works <laughs> on the car because he's like, he's like, I, he's like, oh, I should, I get to go out and help dad, and you're actually excited to do it. Yeah. But then he's like, he's like, here, hold this, hold it. He's got the hubcap. He's yeah. like, hold it, hold it for him, and he's holding it upside down. He doesn't know what the fuck to do. Yeah, I was excited. He's like, no, for no, him, hold man. it, hold it. Upside. He's like, hold it like this. Hold it. There we go. Now you got to put the lug nights in there. And he, by the way. Totally his dad's his fault. His dad's fault. Yeah. That this happened. Yep. So his dad should not hold anything against well, him. Well, I don't know if he would have, yeah. but then Ralphie says the F He word. says the F word. So it, it's kind of like a scapegoat for his scapegoat dad to be dude. upset. Only I didn't say fudge. <laughs> Only I didn't say fudge. I said the grandma. Whatever he said. So when they, when they get back home and he's got the soap in his mouth and everything like that, <laughs> the mom on the other end of the phone, Schwartz's mom. It's not cool. It's terrified the fuck out of me. Yeah. What? 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 <laughs> 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 and then you hear that like, you hear like footsteps. And she killed that kid. It's bad, dude. <laughs> she killed that kid. She, he's dead. <laughs> she straight Shorts up killed dead. Shorts. <laughs> By the way, the kid who played Schwartz. Um, was uh the kid who played Schwartz or who played Flick was actually named Schwartz? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> and the guy who played Schwartz was a different. Like, kid. come on, just change the name. Why didn't he just change <laughs> the just name? Change the name. <laughs> come just, on, you're like, Schwartz. Yeah, like you're Schwartz. Who cares? <laughs> Let's be honest though, Schwartz probably deserves some sort of like comeuppance yeah. in this in this movie. I like Flick, degree. but Schwartz, like, eh, yeah, 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 he's kind of a dick. Schwartz the whole ended time. up in jail. Well, come on, Let's smart ass, and do it. <laughs> My old man says you're nuts. You're nuts. <laughs> uh, that dude's from New York or some shit. He's like, come on. Come you're on. You're a fucking hot dog. <laughs> like, I, I love when he's in bed just kind of dreaming about like what, what his parents' punishment will dude. do to him as a kid. <laughs> he's like a blind kid. <laughs> it's, like, it's so good. You punish me now until you beat me blind and then you'll be sorry. You, <laughs> like, so every good. kid, though, had that thing. Yes. It's like, you'll be act- sorry. You'll be you're sorry when I'm happy dead. that yeah. you're blind because yeah. like, you proved it to your parents. See, exactly. <laughs> now you know. The best part about that scene, again, the overacting, right? Yeah. Where he, he <laughs> knocks on the door. He's got dark sunglasses on and a cane. And a cane. And he walks to the house. They're like, "What's the matter, Ralph?" Well, it's but Ralph. The, but the, the only when they finally realize he's blind is when he pulls out a mug, a <laughs> beggar's mug. They're like, "Oh!" <laughs> they had no clue he was blind with a stick walking around it, the house. It, it, it was, was soap poison. <laughs> oh! <laughs> and he smiles. <laughs> tell us, tell us, Ralph. <laughs> Oh, it's old Ralph. <laughs> it's old Ralph. Come on in, Ralph. <laughs> what was it that brought you to this horrible the state? state. <laughs> it's man, it's so good. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. <laughs> All right, let's move along. So at school, Ralphie has handed his theme back from Miss Shields, and it was graded a C plus. Depressed that he will never get a BB gun for Christmas, he snaps at Scut Farkas and beats him up on the way home. His mom comes to help and takes him home. She cleans him up and keeps the old man from knowing the true extent of what happened. The next night, Christmas Eve, the family goes downtown to watch the Christmas parade. His parents concede and take him and Randy to the department store where Ralphie asks Santa for a BB gun. Even Santa denies him. The family goes home to decorate the tree and the boys are then ushered quickly upstairs to bed. Hell yeah. Uh, uh, (laughs) The snowball... Hits him so perfectly oh, in the face. No, and that's so real, hard. right? I mean, like, yeah. you're not CGIing this. No. Like, someone legitimately threw a snowball. That dude got capped. And bro. it went under his glasses. Oh. Th- that was the most perfect snowball shot I've Straight ever seen up, the guy who was throwing it, like, they did so many takes of it, he got good at throwing them. <laughs> And so that one actually made him cry. That's an actual genuine reaction. Oh he nailed him God. so good. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. It's pretty awesome. Oh it was like some shit. sort of like AD, just like some sort of assistant on set. He's like, I need you to practice throwing some snowballs at a kid's face. That like, guy reveled in that shit. I fucking got it, dude. He reveled dude, in that. give me that me. job. I'd, pay, that I'd job. pay for the job to throw snowballs yeah. at a kid. I, I'd <laughs> pay money to do that job. Uh, I, you know, I think I talked about it earlier, too, like, I miss the old traditions of Christmas. Mm -hmm. Uh, Again, like them earlier, they went to the Christmas tree lot and like bought the Christmas tree Mm -hmm. and that, that whole rigmarole and the, the, the people going out shopping in person. But for me, 
brought back some childhood memories. The they go to the parade. Yeah, and yes. there's like a Christmas parade. I remember uh, my my grand my mom's parents lived in this neighborhood where we would go there for Christmas Eve. All the cousins and aunts and uncles, and someone had a float they, they, that was dressed up like the North Pole, and there was a Santa Claus, and it would drive up and down the neighborhoods until they got to a house where there was a bunch of family, and they would pull over, really? and all the kids would go outside and like sit on Santa's lap and be like, "That's what I want for Christmas." And they're like, "Okay, cool. We better go to bed tonight." And <laughs> like, they, it's just they don't do things like that anymore. Right. No. I'm sure that that's weird nowadays. Maybe to be like, "Yeah, some random guy was on a float and he was dressed like Santa Claus and yeah, he drove down the street." But back then, it was not a big deal. Back then, no. it was Santa. That's Santa. Yeah. It's Santa, and the parents are like, "Cool, I'm drunk anyway. Like, whatever, <laughs> do what you want, man." <laughs> I like I like the idea that like for us like. Uh, uh, back in the day, uh, parents were just drunk, so it's, it's fine. <laughs> Whatever, whatever's happening is fine. The parents nowadays, are just drunk no, 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 right, right. <laughs> so, okay, a question for you guys: Did you guys go and sit on Santa's lap? Oh yeah, for sure. You guys were all about that, mm-hmm. for sure. Dude. I, I, I geeked you out. Were scared? I geeked you? out every time. Oh really? I geeked out every single time. You're the kid. I couldn't do it at Higby's that finally gets to the top and they yeah. they sit him on his lap and he just loses his shit. Well, uh, something close to that. It had to be something close to that, but it, it was like it's more. It was more so in our little town. It was, it was Santa had his little little hut, <laughs> Santa's house, the North Pole it, South. Yeah, yeah. Was, oh yeah. Well, this is Santa's house in the square of Mount Pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like, oh, that's Santa's house. It's like, okay, I guess I I can believe that as a child. But then you go in. There's two doors. One's the enter. One's the exit. And you go in. You sit on his lap. You tell him what you want. You get a piece of candy. You walk out. I couldn't fucking do it. <laughs> I couldn't do it, guys. You're scared. You get I, know, that, I get that it. A little tiny peppermint I, cane. I couldn't do it, man. <laughs> I just couldn't do it's it. Santa. The the thought of Santa Claus is a terrifying thing. It's kind of a weird thing. I'm I don't get it. I'm supposed to tell this guy, and he's like big bearded. I don't. And he knows everything I do and think. God, he could snap me in half. Like, and he comes into my house while I'm yeah. sleeping. See, I'm telling you, maybe he brings you gifts. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, but I, what if I don't like the gifts? I don't God know. damn it, Mike! <laughs> I had a similar thing with the Easter Bunny. Maybe it's just creatures that can. Well, that, no, yeah. no, no, no. That's that's valid. Uh, <laughs> that thing's scary even scarier well. than the Easter Bunny, Tooth Fairy. Oh, God. That's even more fun. Well, I did, at least I don't have to sit on its lap. God. <laughs> Easter Bunny What's is all? actually extremely it's terrifying. See, I'm telling you. Okay, thank God you guys agree with me there. Anyways, yeah, I just had to ask if you guys were cool with that or if, well, how, you yeah, felt, how you felt. I mean, my parents were cool with it. I'm like, whatever. Okay. Whatever my parents tell me whatever. to do, I'm going to do. Um, <laughs> so, Fuck it. So at, <laughs> at, the, at, the, at the Santa slide or whatever, uh, Jean Shepard, he cameos as, as one of the uh, guys in line, or he like Ralphie and his brother Randy go up to, and they think it's the end of the yeah, line. Yeah, they like, go, "Hey, kid, end of the line is that way." That's Jean Shepard, the author. He's of got that's the, him, sick story, looking yeah. beard. That's him. Yeah, that's the guy who's talking to us yeah, the yeah. entire he looks like, time. He looks like Orson Welles. He yeah, does. he does. <laughs> he really does. Do, the, do all do all prolific like like that people who have like this intense impact on our future and our past <laughs> like they always do. they all look like that they all look they staggering always do oh, um god the kid in line with the pilot helmet can we can we can we spend like 30 minutes on this he he's I, surely I'm okay with it he's surely higher than <laughs> bat pussy i can tell you that but not the fun high like a nice docile high his parents give him i'm sure they give him like a steady dose of whatever kind of docile cocktail they'll give him just to calm him down what yeah. the fuck is going on with that kid? um apparently why is he wearing goggles inside? I <laughs> like Santa. If you if you think if you think he was like a like a crazy random dude, like random kid that they just got off the street, yeah. it's because it is. Yeah. Oh shit. Like he so he, he's not acting. He legitimately weirded uh the actor Peter Ra- Billingsley. Ralph, Peter Pe- Billingsley. Peter Billingsley. He weirded him out like for real. He weirded me out. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday when i watched that's, this that, movie that's very easy to comprehend because yeah i was very creeped out the entire time he's on screen i like i the like wizard the wizard of, of oz. oz i like the, wizard of oz. <laughs> I like, like the tin man okay great okay <laughs> it's it's <laughs> just love it. it's like the weirdest part of the movie for me it's oh. like so i don't get it <laughs> did he did he have an experience that was like this or did they just like i don't know whatever well, the wiz- this kid in there. The kid, the kid combined with the Wizard of Oz cre- like characters coming through, that was creepy too. Oh sure, the that, monkeys. That's so scared, too. Aren't you, man. 
I, oh, dude, this whole movie, like this whole movie, old timey, like like makeup and hey. costume. Yeah, no lead paint on their face. No, <laughs> get that out of here. God damn, it's all creepy. How does this not creep people out? There's a couple callbacks. Did Did you get the callback? Uh, he finally gets to Santa. He's uh. like. What do you, geez, what do you want, kid? I know a football. Uh, and it goes football. back to, his, I do not think a football is a good <laughs> football, Christmas yeah. present. Football, yeah. How about football. a nice football? <laughs> football. I do ho, like. Ho, <laughs> ho. <laughs> the fucking POV shot they put oh, on his face. God. So it's like, ho, ho. It's kind of fish eyes, sort of. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. terrifying. I do. It, the elves are just as bad. The <laughs> one who's coming up. We got a lot of kids waiting for him. Get going. <laughs> this little like bell is shaking around. the fucking bell all over the fucking place. Get, get I going. just. I'll tell you what. I just wish there was a a slide like that when I was a kid. Oh that yeah, amazing. <laughs> the slide would have been yeah. the best part. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> God, uh, whatever happened to like the old school traditions? Like we we take old school traditions and we and we just kill it. Where, like, the, apparently in the old days, like, you would set up your tree on Christmas Eve. Right. Now we're like, well, it's September 1st. Time to put up the Christmas tree yeah. and the lights. Dang. Yeah. C- time for Christmas music. Yeah. yeah. Now it's time. <laughs> like, apparently that's they what they did. They did this all the, the day. day before. The day before. That's what they did. You got all that done the day before. How the yes. hell? And I not, not like with the way it. not with the way the work work empire is these days. No, okay, no, you don't no, you don't no, get no, like no, no. two days off and no, no. to go and do it. You don't get that. No, you don't get that. You don't I mean, get that. I wish I just wish the same was for Halloween. Not like not like back in the day Christmas, but like today Christmas. You know, like where everyone just starts in August. four months early. Yeah. yeah. You know, like I just wish it was that same way for Halloween, but it never will be, man. <laughs> it never will be. You never know. What are we doing? Like what we do? Like two Chris two. One Halloween movie this year or something like that? I don't know. It was we probably did, just one. We did one. a thousand of it them. It was probably just and one. We've been, we're still doing Patreon episodes. No. So don't you come at me about how October and Halloween <laughs> spooky season I only remember one. isn't hanging on for dear life, no. clutching at the beard of Santa Claus. I didn't, have to, I didn't have to worry about my finances during Halloween. I just have to worry about nothing, actually. Ugh. It was just a simpler time. Simpler times. Well, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> you should be. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's end this movie. All right. So the next morning, they open presents, and the last thing that Ralphie opens turns out to be the BB gun he wanted. <gasps> he runs outside to use the gun and nearly shoots his eye out, breaking his glasses. Meanwhile, the Bumpus Idiot. Hounds get into the house eating all of the turkey. Mr. Parker takes everyone to a Chinese restaurant for dinner. That night, Ralphie sleeps soundly with his Red Rider held close. The best Christmas gift he ever received. Absolutely. That almost killed him. This perfectly <laughs> depicts Christmas morning it, as a child. It's 100% perfect. Yeah. I lo- before Christmas morning, I love when like, oh, I think I, I think it's time for Santa to get here or something like that. And you're like, you better get, you guys better go brush up and get to bed. And when they're running <laughs> up the <laughs> stairs, fucking <laughs> he, yeah. he drags Randy down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you have to win. You have <laughs> yeah. to yes. win. That's the most important part. <laughs> but okay. It, but it was seriously, it was, I never fell asleep faster in my entire life than Christmas Eve. Really? I could no, never I seriously fall asleep. Did. I would fall asleep right away. And then it's just like that moment where he, they, they, Ralphie shows it perfectly. He wakes up. He's like, oh, it's morning. It's just another morning. Holy shit. It's yeah. Christmas. Like I went through that every year as a kid. Tommy, Tommy, wake up. It's Christmas. <laughs> my brother. <laughs> Tom, Tom, Tom. It's Tommy. Tommy. Tommy yeah, I, it took me forever. I was just so anxious. I'm like, yeah. I, I'm, I, I need, I need that Batman mobile. Or That's I'm gonna, the way I I'm was. gonna fucking slap my mom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's what's gonna happen. And I would just stay up watching this movie in anxiety, you know. And then oh like God, I'd oh get to this God, scene, oh God, I'm like, oh right, now I can't sleep at all. Oh my God, yeah. oh my God. And then I'd wake up and be like, oh, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> but it's always the kids that get there first, and the parents stumble down. Okay, <laughs> I love it's it. always how good. Man, everything opens so quick, and then it's a disaster on the floor. Yeah, one kid's sleeping, the other kid's like, yeah, it's pretty good, I guess. Let me tell you guys about my Christmas, okay? Just for two seconds, I would do that thing, and my but my brother Bob would always wake me up. And he'd say, AJ, it's the same line every year. AJ, you got to come check out the truckload of presents <laughs> under the tree. Truckload. Isn't that, that was, Home Alone 2? It's, it's something like I that. I feel like it's Home it's, Alone 2. He probably got it from Home Alone 2. Uh, uh, yeah, it is Home Alone 2. Uh, Buzz is. says it. Yeah. He's like the, the truckload of presents, you know. And so, and then uh, my parents would get up 
and we couldn't we couldn't touch our presents until of course, all the brothers course, got up. Of course. And either it's either David or Ray who was still stuck in bed, who would not get their asses <laughs> up, calling you boys out, who would not get up and come out and enjoy Christmas morning with us. God damn it. You sons of bitches. It was always one of you calling you out. We did right, do the done. thing where you like <laughs> I me and my brother had to take turns. And we still do yeah. that to this day, actually. What is like like family members at yeah. course take turns, have to take turns, have to. And I, I don't, we never like played Santa. Yeah, played Santa. Uh, that was never okay. a thing for us. Maybe it was just back then or something like well, that. Well, it, it, it sounds like in this movie it was like a coveted thing. Yeah. Almost. Oh, it's like, you played well, Santa last year. You played Santa last year. Why don't you let Ralphie take it this year? And it's like, well, who should I start oh. with? And. It's like for in my in my house, it's like I don't want to be fucking Santa. I just want to get my Give present. Me a goddamn <laughs> present. <laughs> That's it. For and, me. and the bowling ball was another callback too. I <laughs> yeah. felt because like it, earlier when he gets the grand prize, he's like I don't know, maybe it's a bowling alley. It's a bowling alley. <laughs> That's <laughs> he gets, right. He gets Good a bowling point. ball for Christmas. I like. I that. love the classic. Thanks a lot. They they open up the socks and they both just chuck them over their shoulders. <laughs> yeah. Fucking classic. Uh, by the way, I love getting socks for Christmas. I do too now. nowadays. <laughs> oh hell yeah! Hundred percent. Get a good pair of like stance socks or oh, something yeah. like that. You know what I mean? A really good set. <laughs> uh, Randy's old. like a hungry hyena <laughs> when it comes to like like Ralphie will give him a present. He like takes it and he's out of frame, <laughs> ripping it apart over here like it's his victim. Oh boy, a zeppelin! <laughs> a zeppelin! Oh man, that's mine! Oh that's mine! Yeah. Oh that's mine too! <laughs> and then it's just like. Hey! <laughs> he gets pushed out of the way. Hey, kid. Hey. He hey, looks, kid. He looks like a pink nightmare. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> the, the bunny funny, suit. The bunny suit. Can we talk about this for like two seconds? To, Just two seconds, guys, before we, we finish up. What the fuck was that person, that aunt, thinking? Well... I got I got issues with it, it because it, it says it says my aunt thought I was perpetually like a five year old girl or something like that. Girl. <laughs> but like but it's a large bunny suit. So yeah. like yeah. there's some there's some weird family dynamic going on yeah. here that, that they're not ready to tell Ralphie about. Like Aunt clearly knows that he's a nine year old boy. Right. And she's just like, oh, fuck that, I'm making this bunny suit. Yeah. Maybe she's just really good at making bunny suits. <laughs> and she's just preparing for Easter. Like, what's going on? I just don't understand the idea. Like, why is that a suitable gift for a nine year old? Never heard of boy? a Christmas or, bunny. Honestly, even a five year old girl, nine year old girl, I don't know, whatever whatever. Whatever. When, yeah. Where are you gonna wear that? When are you gonna wear that? Yeah, when is only the, when she comes over. When's the appropriate time to to, to don this these, this, this garb. This nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> this, this suit of this suit horrifying of <laughs> villainy. It's, God, it's terrible. This is this is Donnie Darko shit. <laughs> it really is, man. I love how his dad's just like, oh, God. You're, really, you're going to make the kid try it <laughs> you on. You don't want to wear that, do you? <laughs> Take it off. Mom's it trying off. her damnedest, you know, but but dad is just like, this, you you have to stop. <laughs> You have to stop. You're 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 damaging him. Yeah, his brain is not the yeah, same yeah. anymore. Oh man. You, you mentioned it earlier, Sean, how like Ralphie only tells he tells three grown ups that he wants a BB gun for Christmas. The only person he doesn't tell is his dad. Mm. And this is like a moment where you're you're hating the old man. He's just such a mean guy. And this whole thing flips on its head. Yeah. The dad comes off as this terrible, unemotional person, and then it changes with this gift, right? Like he went out and bought this BB gun without mom knowing, wrapped it himself, hit it, and like had this all planned to be like, hmm. oh, what's that over there? Oh. And like when he's explaining it, he's got fucking tears in his eyes. Yeah. He's like crying at how happy he is to give this present to his son. Like it, it's it's an unbelievable change. And then he's like a different person from here on out. Yeah. Even at the end, the affectionate moment with his wife at the very end of the movie, like he's just a totally different person. Right. I don't know what it was, but like that that's a redeeming like Clark Griswold never had like a redeeming moment. It's a good point. <laughs> well, I never like, this I never, guy I did. I never thought that like the dad was like an asshole or anything the entire movie. I just thought yeah. he was just, like working. Stereotypical 40s dad. Yeah, like, you just, go work and you read the paper. And then you go home and you and your furnace is your furnace is fucking up and you don't you get know. to sleep with your wife cuz you have twin beds. Exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally the standards of the day are, are, are ridiculous. Yeah. Um but yeah, no, this it, him watching his son opening the present is, is great. And like when he gets it open, he's like, Do you know how to load it? He's like, Yeah, yeah. He's like, Get, 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 like, get, 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 get the thing. And they he's run all over. up, man. Yeah, he's, <laughs> so good. He's, yeah, he, like, he's, he's. I had one when I was a kid. And then I think, I, I what do he say? I had one when I was eight years old or yeah. whatever, something like that. And, and, I and you can just, you can just see the, the, him yep. looking back at himself and looking at his son 
the same way mm-hmm. that he how excited he was when he got it and everything. Right. It is a beautiful moment. It is a beautiful moment. It's like this movie starts to just cap off in a nice yeah. bow at this point. The old man know? is my favorite part of this movie. Yeah. And yeah. By, by, by bar none because like his performance of the comedy bits are so good. Like, oh yeah. I didn't even get to like his other things that he said when he was ranting about the the furnace and everything like it's just so fucking funny and he's really really good yeah and i relate to him obviously now as an adult i relate to him more oh yeah at, when i watch <laughs> yeah, this yeah. movie for sure oh yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah you start to be like ah <laughs> i get it <laughs> very so, much yeah so. so then the bumpus hounds take over and they end up going to the chinese restaurant did you read about melinda dillon Yes. Oh, yeah, yes oh my god they said she they gave they purposely gave her the wrong script and everyone else knew the right script of when they were at the Chinese restaurant. <laughs> so that she had no idea this duck was going to come out with its head still on it. And so the first time she saw it was when they were filming. Her reactions during the entire sequence were not scripted at all, <laughs> which is exactly what Bob Clark was going for. Oh, my it's God. Unbelievable. Especially so when, he, when he chopped off ah! the head. <laughs> it's, 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 it's smiling. <laughs> it's smiling at us. <laughs> that's Oh, man, that's amazing. Yeah. I do I do love when he does shoot his eye out, quote unquote. Yep. Uh he's up in the bathroom with his mom and he the one of the best fourth wall breaks of all time. And like when she's like bending down to like get something and he's like, It worked, the lie worked. He's like, Yeah, okay. and then we're right back to crying. It's so good. <laughs> Breaking that fourth wall, man, just wide open for just a <laughs> split like it had been, second. It hadn't been broken at that point. No, I don't yeah. think no. so. Mm-mm. One yeah. random moment. There. One one little tiny moment. And yeah, the when uh, they're they're all in bed or whatever, and uh, the mom and dad are just like watching the snowfall with the Christmas tree in the foreground and everything, oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's yeah. We'll get to it, but it's a great movie. Well, let's fucking get well, to I it. I mean, man. that is that is what it is. I mean, that's like that's I I think that's got to be the um, that's the bow on top for the parents during yep. Christmas, right? Is mm-hmm. is like you know what uh, our our kids had a successful christmas or they were happy with what happened we pulled it off again we pulled it off. one more year yep. you know we pulled it off and we did it and let's celebrate with a little little beverage and we'll sit and enjoy each other's company while they sleep absolutely that that scene is like almost the perfect christmas moment in a movie for me mm-hmm. is that that analog warm mm. lights of those old Christmas bulbs yeah. that I wish I could still get that might start my house on fire. The snow oh, falling God. outside, silent night on the radio. It's just a beautiful ending to the movie. It, it is. Uh, my prop, Randy got a dope ass Frankenstein uh, mask that I saw I, in the background. What? Yeah. When he's laying there, like I'll pass out with a Zeppelin. There's like a little, a Frankenstein what? mask and, like by wow. his head. I'm like, that, I want that real bad. So what do prop? you want? Uh, fucking prop. Um, I know what I want. I want, want. Uh, <laughs> I want uh, Grover Dill's stupid little cabbie hat. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, that was... Oh, oh that's what I was going to pick. That's good. Uh, well, no, I would say the, the stupid cap of Scut Farkas. But okay, you want the cap of Scut. No, I'm going to take the decoder pen. Okay. Nice. I want the decoder pen. Yeah. I think that's a cool little thing. I always wanted it, honestly, the whole time I've ever <laughs> yeah, watched this no, movie. Me too. I really want that thing. You guys got anything else? That's it. Well, yeah, I, I got that's all, man. I got one last thing, much cool. like I did in the last episode about talking about uh, Clark Griswold being a bad person. Yeah, I would also like to mention that Ralphie is not a good person. I okay. Movie. You know what? I'm <laughs> glad you brought this up because I didn't want to do it unprompted. But nope. this is good. This is good. Here, here's Let's the list talk. I have. He he left his friend Flick when he was stuck to the floor. Correct. Pole. He just said, "I'm out of here. Yes. See you later." He blamed the f word on his friend Schwartz. That is, Schwartz yep. could have got killed. By yeah. his mom. I think I mean, he she, did. No, I, he we never part, heard from him we again. We see him later. Oh, we do? Uh, yeah, we do see him later. Uh, part of him died. Well, part of him let's died. Let's be real. <laughs> he, that's why he ended up going to jail as an adult later on in his life. He then again again leaves Flick with the bullies. Like Scott Farkas yeah. takes Flick, and he's like, I'm out of here. I'm leaving. Schwartz yeah. became part of the gang and stand by me. Ooh, I like it. Uh, he tries to bribe his teacher for a good grade. In a fit of uncontrolled, unbridled rage, he was going to kill Scott Farkas. Yeah. Like, yeah. he was going to kill him if his mom had not intervened. And then he lies about how his glasses were broken. He is not a good kid. No. Like, overall, I mean, he's he's just scheming to get what he wants. It's what he wants. It's all about what he wants. I mean, I guess that's basically all a kid, uh, being a kid is, is just scheming to get what you want. But yeah. at some point, you got to write that ship. Yeah. It, it's true. It's not like he's a he's a, an admirable 
like hero to our story. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's <laughs> so what Sean said. We're, we're relating at this point. We're relating to the dad at this point. I think so. And more I so done than this, anything. I would have done the same thing the dad did, which was nothing after he beat the shit out of that scut Farkas. Yeah. I'm definitely, yeah. definitely going to be stoked to get a bowling ball. Or something, <laughs> something like that. I'm gonna be like, I can't wait to take this. Or, or for me, it would be like, like golf balls. A, you know a, what I mean? A new tie. A new tie. Didn't I get a tie this year? <laughs> uh, I definitely be good. Uh, feel good about my haggling situation with the tree guy. Oh yeah, you got to feel you good know? about that. Oh yeah. And I'm just gonna finish up drinking drinking wine with my wife, like at the end of the night. Boom. <laughs> about to have that. Push those beds together. <laughs> you bet. You, know, so you bet. There it is, let's, guys. Let's usher in the Jesus Christ and that's right. <laughs> whatever else we got to. Uh, about to about to incorporate that 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 God stick to that shame Oh cake, my whatever. God! I love it. <laughs> what is <laughs> happening? Uh, I just want to call you guys. Uh, you, you're a snort conger viper platypus snot mundane noodle. And that's what he that, said <laughs> when he was yelling at his. That's what he said. Furnace. So yeah. What about his ham dowel? <laughs> Not a finger. <laughs> All right, so we stripped away the nostalgia. We made it through this thing. We got to talk about our modern day critical eye ratings. AJ, what do you got for us, man? Um, you know, I, 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 I still, I still love watching this movie. Like, it's not the holidays. This is one of those things that it's not the holidays without getting to see this. And I know a lot of people come at this movie now. Oh, I'm so tired of the 24 hours come at me, of bro. Christmas story. It's so stupid. I don't know why we have to watch this movie. Why do they do this movie? Listen to that. I still love it. I still look forward to it. 24 hours of Christmas movie. I make sure it's on at least one of the TVs, like at my parents' house when we're down there for the holiday. Um, I love being able to just walk into this movie whenever I want and walk out of it whenever I want. There's no... <sighs> It's so easy to get into, and it always puts me in a holiday spirit. So, um, although I'm probably not as stoked as I was beforehand, I still think I'm probably somewhere around an 8.2. You're right to be. Sean, what about you, buddy? Yeah, everything AJ said is completely, I agree. Uh, It's not Christmas without this movie. Um, and watching it with the, with the critical eye, man. And, and like the, as an adult that we are now, it's, it's, it's just so well made. Like everything about it just happened perfectly. It sounds like it was a good time to make, uh, every decision was uh, perfect in my opinion. Um, every technical aspect of it, the music is great. Uh, I, I, yeah, it's an eight, it's an eight for me. Solid eight for the Shawners. Uh, I, yeah, I agree. I mean, it's, it's better than. I think overall, critically, critical eye, strip away nostalgia, it's better than Christmas Vacation for me. Okay. Uh, it's just it's just realer. It's it, it has so much more real world application. Nostalgia. We stripped the nostalgia away, but it can still make you feel that way. Right. Uh, and so for me, yeah, 7.5, I'm going to say. So that takes our score to a 7.9. That wow. ties us with Princess Bride. Ooh, wow, right. dude. You feel good about that? I, I'm, I'm good. good with that. I'm good okay. with that. All I right. like that. I like it, too. Well, we hope you enjoyed the episode. means the world to have you here with us. Absolutely. We hope you're having such a great holiday season with your family. Tune in next Wednesday for That's another definitely. great episode. We're moving on from Christmas movies. Thank <sighs> God Sean is so happy. It's I'm time sad. for Sean's installment of I've Never Seen. We did oh, mine. Yeah. We did yours. Sean is bringing up a movie that me and AJ have never seen, which is quite a lot. Yeah. But he's picking one. Yeah, he's finally making a decision. <laughs> the, the legend of <laughs> Billie Jean. We're going to hit that up. Girl power, bros. Girl power. Fuck yeah, it's. And if you are new to the podcast, it's still Christmas time. You want to get a little Christmas podcast in your life. Uh, Home Alone and Santa Claus are waiting for you. Absolutely. From last year. Go give those a listen. Some great episodes that you should definitely check out. Merry yeah. Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Please stay in touch with us by following on all of our social media platforms at Confused Breakfast on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, and Confused Be Fast on Twitter. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast and leave a review on the podcast platform of your choice right now.
Also, we have merch. You know you want to rep the Confused Breakfast in public. Mugs, stickers, shirts, all kinds of goodies. Go to confusedbreakfast.com for a direct link. And don't forget about our voicemail number, 319-804-9596. Links to everything you could ever need from us are in the show notes or at confusedbreakfast.com. This includes a way to follow all of us individually in our personal projects that we want you to check out. Mission of the day, tell your friends about us. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Man, somebody talk. <laughs> <laughs>